Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to test out some Van Cleef and Arpels fragrances. So Van Cleef and Arpels are a brand that I have been interested in from my first moments on YouTube. I heard people talking endlessly about Orchidée Vigny and it, it always fascinated me and I've almost blind bought it on so many occasions. So I'm just going to go through three fragrances I've been sent by the lovely Paola Bianca. She sends me lots of different things and I'm very very grateful to her and I'm going to tell you whether they're worth the hype from from my own personal perspective I mean I'm sure they're worth the hype from other people's perspectives because so many people talk about them I, I hear about these fragrances all the time so she sent me three fragrances she sent me Orchidée Vigny she sent me Rose Rouge and she's also sent me Orchid Leather so the one that I had heard endlessly about was Orchidée Vigny. So people always list Orchidée Vigny in their fragrance videos as, you know, for the best vanilla fragrance or for the most chocolatey fragrances. I quite often see it in as well. So I'd always been intrigued by Orchidée Vigny because when you're first starting out collecting fragrances, you tend to go towards the ones that are that are popular, the ones that are hyped, the ones that other people buy, the ones that other people talk about. And sometimes the ones that other people talk about are not the ones for you. So I had never tried any Van Cleef & Arpels fragrances before. I've been wearing these all over the last couple of weeks since Paula sent them to me. The, the one that I was really excited to try was clearly Orchidée Vigny. So that's the one that I went for first. And the thing that struck me with Orchidée Vigny in, immediately was the feeling that I'd smelt this before. The feeling that I'd smelt something similar. And I think the fragrance that reminded me of Orchidée Vigny was one that Ange sent me. So Ange sent me Choco Violette uh, from Mansera. And these both have that vanilla-y, cocoa kind of fragrance, but they also have violet in them. And I actually never really realised that Orchidée Vigny had violet in it because no one really talks about it, I don't think, or not that I've noticed. But for me, that's the thing that really struck me with this fragrance, the violet at the beginning. So I'm not saying these two smell identical, I'm just saying that they both have that violet at the beginning. But I would say that the Mansera is definitely a lot more musky. It has that Mansera DNA that you get in most Mansera fragrances where there is a really heavy musk note underneath it all. I would say also, obviously, Orchidée Vigny is more vanilla. Um, and you also get that orchid note, which I, I just didn't even expect. I know it's called Orchidée Vigny, but I never really expected to actually smell the orchid. So the orchid in this fragrance really reminds me of the orchid in this fragrance, which is Jimmy Choo. But yeah, so that all aside, how is the vanilla in this fragrance? Well, it's a lot more powdery than I was expecting. It's a lot gentler. I was expecting a really gourmand, really cake-like, really kind of almost spicy, dark, sticky vanilla. This is not like that. This is more like a light vanilla, like, you know when you see a yoghurt pot with a, a vanilla orchid on the on the front of it or something or on the side of the, the pot that is how i think of this fragrance it's a very light almost watery vanilla in the beginning of this fragrance when it dries it does become richer and you do get more of that chocolate note coming through you get like a, a cocoiness which becomes more chocolatey as it dries so this fragrance reminds me a little bit of mini eggs you know the the coat the sugary coating on mini eggs the vanilla -y sugary coating that's how this smells to me in the dry down that sort of cocoa slightly chocolatey but mainly vanilla sugary smell this fragrance definitely has a powdery feel to it there's it's not really like a truly um like cakey vanilla to me this one is more of a, a powdery vanilla something quite gentle the longevity of this on me is is not amazing but it's not terrible i know a lot of people talk about this having really terrible longevity but i would say this is probably like a three or four hour kind of thing on my skin so do I like this enough to want to purchase it, having sampled it? I think ultimately I don't. I'm, I'm actually shocked at how much I'm not in love with this fragrance. 
I would say it's a like. I would say it's a mild like. It's something that I don't find addictive. It's something that I don't think has very good performance. It's something that I just don't really feel much for, really. And that really surprised me. I really thought this one was one that I was going to really fall in love with. And I wish I did fall in love with this because, you know, a lot of people regard this as one of their favourite fragrances, don't they? People say this is this is one of the best vanillas. I think maybe I'm just not in, that into vanilla. I think that's really the, the crux of the issue here. I think if you are into vanilla, this may be really, really nice and something that you're gonna enjoy. But for me, this this wasn't something that I want to, to purchase having sampled it. And I thank Paola for that because she's just saved me a lot of money. So that's um, Orchidée Vanille. So the second fragrance that Paola sent me from Van Cleef and Arpels is Rose Rouge. And this one is a, a very fruity rose fragrance in the opening. I would say that the, the fruit is, is really the more dominant thing for me. So there's raspberry, there's blackcurrant, and there's also bergamot in the opening. And I do smell all of those quite prominently, but probably most prominent is the raspberry. As it dries, you lose the raspberry and it becomes more blackcurranty, but the rose becomes even more prominent. And then the rose dies back a little bit and you get more of the patchouli. There is supposed to be cocoa in this fragrance, but honestly, I just don't smell it. And actually, this fragrance did remind me of other things I've tried. So the closest thing that I've tried to this fragrance, I think, is Mansara's Roses Vini. And this is another one that Ange sent me very kindly. And I would say out of these two, I think Roses Vini is just slightly more interesting. And also Roses Vini tends to stick around a bit longer and it projects more. But it depends whether you like musk. So the musk in Roses Vini is much heavier, whereas in um, Rose Rouge, you get more of patchouli. So you get kind of a light patchouli in the end of the fragrance. Do I like this? I, yeah, I do like this, but I do think that it's quite light. It's quite lacking in projection and the longevity is, is not really there for me. I probably get, again, three, four hours out of this, no more, and then it's completely gone. So again, I think for the price point, this is not one that I, I would rush out and buy just because of its similarity to a lot of other fragrances. The fact that I already have um, Intense Cafe, which is sort of in the same ballpark, although obviously Intense Cafe has Oud and also is a lot heavier on musk than this one. I think it's just the scent profile that's quite common, this one. But it is really pretty and the fruitiness does really make it stand out in the opening. And I can see why people love this one. So that's Rose Rouge by Van Cleef and Arpels. So I'm going to end on a very positive note. So the final fragrance that Paola has sent me a sample of is called Orchid Leather. So this one came out only last year and it's one that I hadn't really seen that many people talk about. But this one is absolutely beautiful. So this is such a strong leathery fragrance and I really didn't know that I was into leather until I started going down the queer nomad line with Memo Paris. And then I realised that I love leather. This one I would say is quite possibly up there with the nicest leather fragrances that I've ever smelt. So the one that stands out as one of the best is Italian Leather by Memo Paris. And this has that same feel. So Memo Paris Italian Leather has a bit of a resinous feel. It has vanilla and it also has just a really deep leather. I'd say Orchid Leather is along the same vein. Not exactly the same, but similar and at a better price point than Italian leather. So this is a sticky molasses-like black leather. It's smooth, shiny, deep, but it's a bit fruity, resinous, sweet, and it's also fragrant. So there's also incense in this fragrance. And even though it's not exactly smoky, it just adds a bit of depth. It's more of a fragrant feeling from the incense rather than a smokiness. The leather note here is produced by labdanum and I feel like labdanum here is just so intense and black and I don't know whether it's being contributed to by the other notes but there's something just so intense about the leather here. It just feels really smooth and sensuous and it, I feel like this fragrance, I don't really say this often but I feel like this one is a very seductive fragrance. On the right person this is just gorgeous. I just I cannot go over this fragrance. 
So I guess the sweetness and fragrance is coming from the vanilla and maybe also the plum and perhaps even the incense. And I think that's what I find so addictive about this fragrance. I think that combined with the really black leathery treacle like feeling is what is making me come back for more with this one. I think actually this also has longevity issues but they're not as bad as the other two and I think just because it does project a lot more than the other two you probably notice more when it fades and that's why you perhaps notice the longevity on this more than you do the other two. I remember the first time I tried this fragrance and it was a day when I was at work and it just made me instantly feel like I should be going out. It has that kind of fun um, but intense night out kind of feel to it. Something you prepare for, something you look forward to, that kind of night out. Something special, perhaps with somebody special, I feel. I think this one is something that I will definitely put on my list. If I see a good deal on this, I will pounce because it is gorgeous. And I will, you know, obviously use up this sample before I decide because it was a quite a big sample from Paola. She's always super generous. But yes, um, I'm really taken with this one. So that's Orchid Leather by Van Cleef and Arpels. I think out of the three, this is the one that I, that I really, really enjoy. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please press the like button and please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And also please let me know if you've had any experiences with Van Cleef and Arpels fragrances. Are there any others from the range that I should definitely check out? Which are your favourites? Am I completely wrong about Orchid Avenue from your point of view? Please let me know if you love Orchid Avenue and tell me what it is about it that you love. Tell me what I'm missing when I'm smelling this fragrance. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.